Hey all, it's actually Nick with Indy Farm Life. I've made a couple sneak peeks or cameos, if you want to call them, on the on the site. You know, Adam and Chris doing most of the filming and publishing, but uh, I got a little bit of a different video for you guys today. So if you've been following our pond progress on the uh, videos that Adam's been putting up, one of the latest ones uh, you would probably have seen towards the end, the final push, I believe was the name of that one. Uh, 2520, uh, the John Deere 2520 made a little bit of a made an appearance doing some good work with the uh, four foot frontier box blade. Uh, worked it pretty hard that day, and then the next day went out to actually take the trash cans down and noticed I had some uh, coolant leaking out of the bottom of the tractor. Uh, I was a little bit concerned, but I also thought it odd at the same time that I ran it all day Sunday, didn't see any leaks whatsoever. Um, but upon further investigation, I did have a coolant leak and it was a, a busted radiator. So I had to order a new one through our local John Deere dealer uh, for my 2520. It was actually on national back order. There was two available at one point, but they disappeared pretty quickly. Um, so it took a few weeks actually for the part to get in. And uh, my 2520 basically sat in the driveway as a large paperweight. So um, I'm just gonna kind of show you a little bit quickly today on how I, I made that replacement. I've actually already done the replacement. That was kind of my bad. I didn't get it uh, videoed as I did it, but it's uh, pretty simple. There was nothing really out there that I could see explaining how to do this. So I figured what, what better place in any farm life. So here's my old unit. Um, as you can see, it's kind of dirty and whatnot. Um, I've taken, this is obviously already out of the tractor. I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit to try to see what happened. Uh, why we had a leak. I don't really think any of that was the issue. That's where I actually just ran some water uh, This unit is usually all put together in one piece uh, with some mounting bolts right there um, I've since taken this apart. So this back shielding that goes around the fan actually I've got it separated and I found my culprit um, on the back side of the radiator There was damage done to some of the fins. I'm not really sure how I don't know if it internally uh, busted or something somehow got in there from the back I'm not really sure um, but I poured some water into the radiator and it was flowing out of that spot right there so there's the new unit already put into the into the 2520 nice and shiny and clean uh, so what I did is I looked up the parts diagram on John Deere parts so this part number is going to be an LVU 803043 and actually it's kind of confusing because none of those numbers are actually present on the actual radiator assembly um, there was some of these i7530 there's actually another one that's on the back side here by the fan an a7530 as well and that made it kind of difficult to understand what i was actually supposed to be getting um, you have to be careful because when you start searching for 2520 radiators a lot of things come up actually for an older john deere style 2520 and it doesn't correlate to this newer, this is a 2011 model uh, compact tractor. The old 2520s were larger tractors and a lot of things were coming up for those uh, for aftermarket replacements. So I just kind of want to walk through the, uh, the installation process since I didn't video this as I went. And to be honest with you, I was uh, a little nervous going into it, not knowing what to expect. And it went very, very quickly. Um, and that's actually why I really didn't even get it videoed is because it went so fast as I figured it out. Um, I did this last weekend and basically only took me 40 to 45 minutes to do the whole thing and that was me being a couple of cautious extra parts so or a couple steps I should say and um, so I'll just kind of go through what I did so if you have a leak in your radiator system or your coolant system and you're doing this replacement there's a high probability that you may have an empty radiator already um, but one of the first things that you've got to do is actually drain out all the coolant from that system um, what John Deere has on the bottom side of this is a little little valve and you're just going to turn this counterclockwise and loosen that up and that's going to drain all the coolant out of the system <clears throat> so that will get your radiator empty and then it'll get some of these coolant lines a little empty um, but what you're going to find is when you start taking them apart you're going to have a little bit of drainage um, so just make sure you have a five gallon bucket around that you can dump this stuff into you're not supposed to let it get in the ground or let it go down the sewer or anything so we'll make sure we try to keep keep it as clean as possible so as I said, it was all pretty straightforward. And uh, one of the first things you gotta do is go ahead and just loosen up this bolt here um, on your air cleaner. Um, so that way this, this tube here can get 
moved up out of the way and actually rotate rather than just sitting there in the way. Um, so I'll just leave that there for now. Not that big of a deal. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, so you remove, get that out of your way. And then if I bring this down here, um, you're going to see uh, the hose clamp that is on the expansion tank. Uh, you're just, all you're going to do is uh, squeeze those two clips in and remove that tube off the expansion tank. Um, so you will reuse this expansion tank and then also the bracket that is on the expansion tank. Um, so make sure that you don't get rid of that. There are two bolts holding the, uh, the bracket for the expansion tank mounting that are attached to the back of that radiator shroud. Uh, so go ahead and uh, you can leave those on for now uh, to pull as we pull those, this radiator out. But then once we get onto the ground, you want to make sure that you take those two bolts out and put it over on your new unit. So what's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but there's going to be a bolt back here um, that's on a bracket. We're going to take, I took that bolt out there, um, 13 millimeter, I think. I can't exactly remember. Throw a couple different sizes on it. You'll be able to figure it out. Um, so there's one on the right side. And there's one on the left side. You're going to remove both of those bolts. And what that does is that's just a mounting point back to the actual engine. You don't have to take those bolts there and loosen them up. Just take them and apart from the actual radiator itself. We've got a hose clamp here. So we're gonna squeeze that with a pair of channel locks, vice grips, whatever you wanna put on it. Squeeze that down. You're gonna move that bracket, or I'm sorry, that clamp, and pull that hose off right there. Back over here on the right side, there's another hose down below. Again, same type of uh, clamp on that. We're just gonna squeeze it with whatever tool of choice and remove that hose. So on the back side, you're gonna have two bolts, uh, two hose clamps, and then the third hose clamp that is uh, holding on that expansion tube. And then once you get all the, those three those three clamps and the two bolts, the back side is gonna be good. Um, we're gonna leave that in place, like I said, for now. And then we're gonna move to the front side of the machine. And on the front side, both left and right, we have these, uh, these bolt bracket mounting arms. I don't really know what you wanna call them. It's kind of an awkward awkward design and what these are doing is they're just basically holding it to this coil system here um, so these are really easy as well all you're gonna have to do is loosen up uh, they have bolts on the back side so we're gonna loosen up this bolt I'm sorry nut and we're gonna loosen up that nut and what that's gonna do is you can actually leave it attached to there just loosen it up to where you can get some room you remove that one completely and pull that out of off the radiator and that's gonna allow the radiator to come free from the machine. <clears throat> we have another one over on the right side. Again, loosen this one up. It's about as far as you can. Take this one all the way out. Then these things will just pull out and kind of rotate and you can let these things hang. And so at that point, we have the, uh, we have the radiator completely removed, detached, I should say, from the machine. And, and then honestly, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more difficult. You just have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing that radiator will pull off the machine and I'll see if I can show you what's happening on the underside. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little rubber bushing right up here. And there's one on the, I'm on the right side of the machine right now. There's one on the left side as well. And the, the radiator just kind of drops down into these bushings and that helps take some of the vibration out of it. And that's where it sits. So once you have all those mounting locations undone that I was showing you, it's on a pull from the machine. Now the little bit of the trick here, is that there is a little bit of interference between the back of the radiator shroud and the actual fan. So you have to be able to, when you start taking this out, you're gonna to want to tilt this kind of forward towards the front of the machine to help get around the actual shroud um, that's on the back side of this radiator. So as I said, once you get this old radiator out of your machine, you're gonna to wanna to take that expansion tank that used to be there. Those are where those two bolts are. And we're going to transfer that over to the new radiator. Use the same bolts. It doesn't come with it in the kit. We're going to put those there. In this expansion tank, it just kind of pulls up and slides down into that little V, that little V spot. So pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you transfer the, the bracket. So honestly, guys, about at that point, um, I kind of told you how all that comes out. The new one goes in reverse order. You're just going to you don't want to slide it in back 
uh, in front of that fan, uh, get your shroud down around your fan, get the, the two rubber grommets in line where it wants to be, and then put your, your four bolts and your three hose clamps back into, into its spot. So um, I'm not going to go through that a whole lot. And um, it's like I said, it only took me about 40 to 45 minutes. So I was, I was pretty pleased of how, how quick it went. Now, once you've got your radiator all back in place, you got on to refill your coolant system, obviously. My 2520 uh, was spec to use this Cool Guard 2, like 1.2 gallons or something like that. Of course, they sell it in one gallon sizes. Um, so I had to buy two of them. Honestly, it's not even really that, that expensive. Uh, I, don't even, I can't remember exactly what they were because I bought it at the same time that I had the radiator. Uh, the radiator, uh, just as an FYI, uh, was priced at four hundred and seventy nine ninety nine cents, um, kind of pricey um, in my opinion, but it is a green part. Uh, John Deere loves doing that to us, but I was able to save on quite a bit of labor, I would think, by, by doing it myself. And honestly, it took less than the hour, so it was well, well worth it and a good payoff. So um, when you're doing this, make sure you grab. If you're doing it on twenty five twenty, you're gonna want to grab a couple, a uh, couple gallons of this and uh, just pour open up the radiator cap pour it all in there until it's towards the top and then uh, fill up your expansion tank into the between the two lines your full and your full and low lines and uh, the expansion tank does have a, a bleed off on it i believe so i think it kind of self burps itself and gets everything moving like it wants to move well guys i hope that my uh, first video for indie farm life was helpful to anybody out there with a the john deere 2520 having to replace the radiator like I said, there was not a whole lot of help uh, out there that I could find, so uh, that's why I decided uh, IFL needed to be the place for it. Sounds like Chris is over there somewhere with the tractor, and I believe he is getting roped into the same thing that I am. And we get to plant flower bulbs today for, the, for our wives. Um, they really like their flowers, so we're going to get those in the ground before it freezes over. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, join our page, uh, keep a lookout. I think Adam's got uh, one or two more pond videos coming. If they already haven't launched already, depends on when we get this loaded up. So we appreciate you watching and uh, spread the word. Thanks.